What is going on, everybody? The Shift Podcast. I know it looks like it's one person. It's only me today. I know. No Nick Earnshaw today. He has a good explanation. He texted me this morning. Uh, he's not feeling good. Um, so, obviously, feel better soon, Nick. Uh, Nick will be back next week. Or as soon as soon as we do our next episode, whenever that is, um, at least by next week, um, when we do our recap uh, of opening week, opening day, all that stuff, because obviously three days away here from opening day, got to do the opening day and opening week um, preview. But Nick will Nick will be back soon. I promise. Nick promises. I promise. Nick will be back soon. Um, so unfortunately, no Nick today. You're just getting me. Only me. I'm sorry. Only Francisco Rojas today. Apologize. But you got to deal with it. Okay? So whether you're listening or you're watching, obviously I appreciate you. And we're going to talk some baseball today, baby. A lot of fun, exciting storylines, matchups, all that stuff. Things to watch heading in um, to, to Thursday's opening day here. A lot of a lot of exciting stuff. Um, before that, you know, go do all that stuff. Make sure you subscribe uh, to the, the YouTube channel, um, to the podcast, wherever uh, you listen to your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple, iHeart, Google, wherever you listen. I think we're on Google. Nick knows better than me. Shows how great of a co-host I am. Uh, but make sure you go subscribe. Make sure uh, you go watch on YouTube as well and hit subscribe there, like, share, everything. All that stuff. Um, just did a video on the Miami Marlins. They have unveiled that they're going to wear their classic, classic teal jerseys um, that they wore in the in the mid '90s when they uh, first came into Major League Baseball. So really, really exciting stuff. Did a video on that. Go make sure you watch and share and all that good stuff. Um, and later on in the show, we have our first special guest. We have our first special guest. I'm not going to say who it is right now. I'm going to let you find out later on in the interview. Um, if you've watched, uh, you know, before I've had, before I had Nick on while I was doing this shit, but it was just me. Um, if you, if you were, you know, watching, listening to my stuff, then you already know uh, who this first guest could possibly be. Um, so, but stay tuned. Exciting, exciting interview. Um, it's a really, really good stuff. Really, I promise. Um, in the second half uh, of this show, you're really, really going to enjoy uh, that interview. So stay tuned for that. But before we get into uh, that uh, that interview, let's talk about some opening day slash opening weekend. I'll say that opening weekend um, matchups to watch. I'm going to go through three things here, okay? I'm going to go through opening day matchups to watch uh, as far as pitching goes. Um, three storylines to watch uh, this weekend, and then three series to watch, uh, three overall series. So let's get started uh, with opening day matchups, pitching matchups to watch. And if look, if you follow me on social media, if you watch my content in the past, you know I really, really, really enjoy pitching. Um, so I'm going to start here. Uh, number one. Aaron Nola versus Jacob DeGrom. A bit biased here. If you know me, I'm a Phillies fan. Nola and DeGrom, man. Super, super. It's like, it's like, oh, you would have thought this was a Phillies Mets matchup a couple of years ago, but no, this is Phillies Rangers uh, between Aaron Nola and Jacob DeGrom. Surprisingly, this is, I guess it shouldn't be as surprising, but I was thinking that Wheeler was the, the opening day guy the last couple of years, but he wasn't. It was Aaron Nola. Um, Nola will be, uh, starting in his sixth straight opening day start. And that is, that is tops in the majors right now. No one has made six consecutive starts, uh, currently in major league baseball. Aaron Nola has done that. So Aaron Nola looking a uh, big year for him too, right? Big year because uh, of the contract situation. Dave Dombrowski, uh, recently just said, uh, that, they are going to uh, halt extension talks with him, and hopefully they can get something done with him by the end of the season. 
kind of hard to see him uh, anywhere besides uh, red pinstripes. Could, could not see really see that happening. I think they'll get something done, especially, uh, you know, with the news of the Reese Hoskins injury. So I think that's a big deal there. Um, Aaron Nola. And, and of course, on the other side, Jacob DeGrom. Jacob DeGrom, Texas Rangers. This is his new team. This is uh, something we're not used to, especially if you're a Mets fan, something uh, that no one's used to. And Nolan DeGrom has fa- have faced off before. Um, I have not looked at uh, their head-to-head uh, numbers against each other, but definitely, uh, we've definitely seen it in the past and um, definitely some intriguing storylines on both sides there. Um, you know, overall, Nolan DeGrom, something to watch, especially with, you know, with DeGrom coming back and, uh, I mean, I think I speak for all baseball fans when, when I say we want to see Jacob DeGrom healthy. He's the best pitcher in baseball when healthy. I don't care what he's mid thirties. He's still the best pit. We've seen him whenever he's healthy, best pitcher in baseball. I have yet to see that uh, be anything different when he's healthy. So hopefully he can stay healthy uh, for the good of baseball. Aaron Nolan, Jacob DeGrom, definitely my Number one starting Mitch, uh, starting uh, pitching matchup to watch on opening day. Number two, Logan Webb versus Garrett Cole. Logan Webb, honestly, one of my one of my favorite pitchers in baseball. Little biased here, but Logan Webb, what he can do with his changeup and sinker, uh, they're some of the best pitches in the game. I think the run values were somewhere in like the negative nine and negative 12, somewhere around there. You might be able to flip flop those uh, Logan Webb stuff is absolutely nasty and has been one of the better pitchers in baseball, you know, since uh, really since he made that uh, since he came up a couple of years ago, right? Came up a couple of years ago uh, in 2021 and had a good season and ha- it was really good in that postseason too, for the giants. Um, even, even though they lost to the Dodgers in the NLDS, um, but Logan Webb, uh, definitely, uh, you know, one of my pitchers to watch even this year in general, because I, I mean, he's been uh, kind of underrated, honestly, seems like ever since his performance in the postseason uh, with the Di- with the Giants a couple of years ago, seems like people kind of forgot about it. Maybe because the Giants, uh, you know, were kind of a mediocre team uh, last year. Maybe he's getting overlooked a little bit, but Logan Webb, to me, one of the more fun pitchers to watch in baseball. On the other side, Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole led the league in strikeouts last year. Led the league in strikeouts. Uh, we all know, I think, he, again, I think people kind of forgot about him last year. Just because he didn't have an ERA under two doesn't mean he's not still one of the better pitchers in baseball. Um, I think he I think he still, I could be wrong, he could have led the, led the I know he led the American League in strikeouts. 257, correct. Um, still had a 3-5 ERA, not perfect. But uh, still good, still 11% above league average, led league in strikeouts again, still pitched 200 innings. So Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole still, still, still Garrett Cole, man. I think Garrett Cole's uh, got maybe a little bit of a chip on his shoulder this year, maybe because he wasn't the talk, you know, heading into, heading into camp this year, maybe heading into the season. Kind of, kind of weird, right? Is Garrett Cole flying under the radar? I don't know. You tell me. Is Garrett Cole flying under the radar? He, he might possibly be, but Logan Webb, Garrett Cole, good matchup to watch there. Look, obviously opening day matchups, always fun to watch. The next one, man, Shane Bieber and Luis Castillo. On the one side, I feel like Shane Bieber's kind of flying under the radar as well. Like Shane Bieber is, I mean, 2020 had, I think he won the pitching triple crown, obviously only what, like 10 to 12 starts. Uh, but Shane Bieber, ever since, ever since, was he getting hurt a lot? I I don't even remember. Was he getting, ah, man, was Bieber getting hurt? I feel like he was. I feel like that's kind of the reason why people forgot about him, right? Didn't he, did he get TJ? I want to say he got TJ. Um, Yeah, he missed, what? He missed about 20 starts, 2021. I and mean, then last year he came back, man, 288 ERA. Uh. Upwards of 200 strikeouts, upwards of 200 innings on the dot. Um, you know, 132 ERA plus 3.5 B war. G- good season, if you ask me. Good season, if you ask me, on Shane Bieber's side versus Luis Castillo. Um, you know, coming off uh, getting traded to the Mariners last year, and he's in a stacked rotation now, uh, Luis Castillo. Um, between him, Robbie Ray, uh, uh, 
why am I blanking on the other uh, other names right now? Um, who the heck else is in that Seattle rotation? Robbie Ray, Luis Castillo. Uh, no, and uh, shoot, they traded for somebody. Then ah, shoot, I forget. Uh, but I'm, I'm like 99% sure the Mariners have a very good rotation. Maybe it's not the Astros rotation and not, and the colors is, is out now too. But regardless, Luis Castillo, one of the better pitchers, uh, you know, on the Mariners, he's, he's right there. Obviously he's the ACE. Um, if he's pitching on opening day for the most part. Um, so Luis Castillo, I think, uh, you know, him Bieber is going to be really fun to watch. I mean, when I watch Luis Castillo, when I watch the, the action on his sinker, uh, and, and his breaking ball, I mean, his change up, excuse me. I mean, super, super, super filthy, super, just to, if, if you're a fan of pitching in general, obviously Luis Castillo is really, really fun to watch. So Bieber versus Castillo there, man, for me, that's my, my third matchup to watch fourth, easy one, man, Max Scherzer. Sandy Alcantara, uh, Mad Max. Um, now he's coming into the season healthy. Um, he missed a couple of months last year. Did miss about, you know, 10 to 12 starts. So I think it's important to watch with Scherzer. Can he stay healthy this year? Um, but still one healthy, one of the best pitchers in baseball right now. Um, Sandy Alcantara on the other side, obviously, Coming off a Cy Young season, no, Sandy did not land in my top five players in NL East. Do with that what you want. Still my honorable mentions. Um, go make sure you watch that video. It's on the YouTube channel. Top five players in the NL East. It'll be in the description box on YouTube. It will be there. Go make sure you watch that. But Sandy, obviously an incredible pitcher to watch right now. Super, super, super fun. Um, what again, like I said, Luis, Luis, with Luis Castillo, his sinker out of this world. Um, I think he also has a changeup that's super out of this world as well. Sandy Alcantara is just really, really fun to watch. I'm looking, looking for him to have a big year again, man. Looking for him to have a big year. So Scherzer versus Sandy uh, should be really, really exciting to watch. And then the last one, kind of wanted to throw this in there. Not, not like, a, it's not like we're looking at, Randy Johnson versus Pedro Martinez here. It's not like we're looking at, uh, I know I mentioned that, but like I'm talking uh, current pitchers, Nola DeGrom, Scherzer and Sandy, like, uh, you know, Bieber versus Castillo. These are big ones that come to mind. But what about like Mitch Keller and Hunter Green? Mitch Keller, uh, this is obviously Pirates and the Reds, um, not two teams that are really going to be really exciting to watch this year. Maybe some, a few, uh, you know, maybe exciting players. Um, you know, the, the, the pirates are, you know, you, you have, uh, O'Neill Cruz over there. You have, you have all that going on, but not much going on with these rebuilding teams. Um, but Mitch Keller and Hunter green, Mitch Keller was, was the pirates, uh, top prospect for a couple of years back, maybe like three or four years ago, Mitch Keller was, uh, you know, the number one prospect, um, had a, solid year i would say last year for the pirates he was solid and then hunter green hunter green didn't have uh you know the best year for the cincinnati reds um you know i think we were all uh just mesmerized by his ability to throw a hundred consistently um it was unbelievable honestly what he was just able to do with his fastball so again mesmerizing to watch um he, you know, 444 ERA, 24 starts, um, 125 innings, 164 strikeouts. Um, his ERA was just a 1% of, you know, just hovered, just hovered right around league average. So he was, he was okay. Um, I, I'm looking for Hunter Green to take a next step though. He is really fun to watch. Um, so I think, you know, Mitch Keller's in a spot where, you know, maybe he's been in the majors for three or four years now. Maybe the, the Pirates are looking um, as they rebuild for, for him to be, you know, one of those pieces. Mitch Keller is supposed to be one of those pieces. So when I look at Mitch Keller, um, I, I look to him, uh, you know, maybe, look, maybe he has a big year this year. Maybe he takes the next step. On the other side, Hunter Green, again, I, I it's early, I know. 24 starts to his career, only over 100 innings. 125 innings to the start of his career. 
but this is one of those matchups where I'm looking at like th- this could be uh, a sign of things to come. Maybe w- maybe it's a super good pitchers duel. Uh, maybe they take both of these take the the franchise um, you know in the right direction. Maybe, maybe maybe we see that with Mitch Keller and Hunter Green. So I'm really intrigued uh, to see that matchup. No, it's matchup. No, it's not. Uh, you know, it's not the um, the the Guardians and the the, the Mariners or two you know, former uh, recent playoff teams, not looking for either of these teams to be playoff teams. But again, some pieces there for each each of those rebuilding teams um, with the Reds and the Pirates. Um, so those are my starting matchups, uh, my opening day matchups, excuse me, to watch on Thursday. Make sure uh, you go uh, enjoy those games because those, those should be some good pitching matchups. Um, so we'll see. Then on to three storylines to watch. And I want to start with this storyline because obviously big news here in the last couple of days. We've seen it in recent years, certain guys. And this is the opening day roster. I know it's a little different, but Vladdy Jr., Juan Soto, Fernando Tatis Jr., who is returning to the baseball for the San Diego Padres this year. Um, certain guys get called up at young ages now. Ronald Acuna Jr. could be another one, okay? Um, Andrew Painter was possibly going to be one for the Phillies this year. Who knows? Anthony Volpe makes the opening roster, has a monster spring for the Yankees, makes the opening day roster. Jordan Walker, monster spring training, makes the opening day walker for the St. Louis Cardinals. Clearly, three storylines to watch this weekend. I, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure both of them are going to be in the starting lineup. Maybe Jordan Walker's not. I don't see why how how they can how they could not though. I I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, those are two guys that I, and I love this. I I love to see young guys uh, get brought up, and I love to I love the drama. I love the the anticipation of what they could be. Um, two of these guys could be elite baseball players. They have that potential, and maybe it doesn't happen this year. Who who knows? Maybe, maybe these teams made mistakes, but. I think it's great for baseball. I think it's awesome. Now, if each of these if each of these guys, if it was a fluke in the spring where they had a hot spring start, but they they have awful first halves for their respective teams, then you send them back down. You send them back down maybe after a month or two if they're really really struggling. Um, but I think it's awesome. Awesome uh, storylines to watch for this weekend. How do they fare uh, on opening weekend? Um, for the Yankees with Anthony Volpe and the Cardinals for Jordan Walker. Really, really fun. And obviously another story, probably the biggest storyline to watch for most major league fans, the new rules. How are the new rules going to look in regular season play? We saw how it looked, um, you know, in spring training. Certain things happen. Certain guys getting adjusted. You know, maybe fans are still getting adjusted. Some fans still don't like it. Well, you know, get used to it. You're still going to watch the game, so you can sit here and blabber to me and complain to me um, that you don't like it, whatever. You're still going to watch the game, so bitch all you want. Um, the new rules are going to be – it's going to be it, – it, I mean, I don't know. It, it's It's going to be interesting now that it's going to be when games matter. So obviously, I mean, maybe some of the World Baseball Classic guys, they'll have a bit, a tiny bit of trouble, maybe readjusting once they come back, but they'll get used to it. But it'll be interesting to to see. I mean, I'm just I was just sitting here watching uh, Blue Jays Phillies. Craig Kimbrell uh, doesn't get the pitch off in time, and he didn't look too happy about it. Um, and then JT Romuto got thrown out for some bull crap, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm, I mean, actually maybe it is because he got, pissed. well, it wasn't even, it was dumb. It wasn't even, he didn't even really get pissed off. It was, it wasn't anything, but it's going to be interesting to see who gets, who gets pissed off. Who's a, who are some, maybe who are some players that you would think would get pissed off, but don't get pissed off uh, about, about certain rules. I mean, look, we got the shift, the bigger bases, I guess, even with the, with the bigger bases, who, who's, it's going to be interesting to see uh, maybe, you know, our steel is going to be up off the bat with some of the, with the, uh, the bigger bases. Um, 
yeah, and like I mentioned with the pitch clock, it's going to be interesting to see uh, which pitchers are getting ticked, which pitchers aren't, uh, which pitchers are getting used to it, which pitchers still hate it, all that stuff. Um, the new rules are going to be really interesting uh, to watch um, this weekend. That's definitely one of the biggest things I think we're all watching. Third one, third storyline to watch from the American League West. And I don't, I don't really think anyone's buying them. I, I did have a guest on today who kind of maybe is buying this team. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Now, I, I, I want to I say this. This is my whole premise here. Do not be fooled by a hot start from the Angels. And I don't think most will. It's the Oakland Athletics. They're playing this weekend. Wouldn't be surprised if they swept them. I mean, Athletics, one of the worst teams in baseball. They were last year. Probably will be this year. Angels went 27 and 17 to start the season last year. Don't let this be. Don't let this be a little thing that just automatically. Oh, don't be fooled by. Or, oh, look at the Angels. They're hot. I mean, look, they added some pieces, which they did. They did add some pieces this year. They did. They're, they're actually, the roster actually doesn't look so bad. It doesn't look so bad. I think they added Tyler Anderson, who was on the Dodgers last year, had a good year. They added Brandon Drury, who had, uh, you know, at least for the first half of the season, had uh, put up some good offensive numbers for um, the Reds and the Padres, okay? Don't be fooled. Do not be fooled. We've seen this movie many times, okay? If the Angels get hot to start, especially this weekend, don't be fooled, please. Do not be fooled by... The Los Angeles Angels, Angels of Anaheim. They have Mike Trout. They have Shoya Otani. Hey, maybe Anthony Rendon could stay healthy. I don't know. Be the, the Anthony Rendon he was a couple of years ago, a couple of years back, one of the best third basemen in baseball. But I don't trust it. Let's be real. I, I just do not be fooled. My overarching thing, do not be fooled by a hot start from the Angels. Even if it lingers on to a couple of weeks to a month, I'm not going to believe it unless they actually make the playoffs into the season. Hey, maybe they, I mean they have a roster that says they could possibly win the 85 to 90 games, but who knows, man? Who knows? Angels uh do not be fooled by a hot start from the Angels. And then th- to wrap up here, uh before we get to the interview, three series to watch. My first series this weekend, Blue Jays and Cardinals. Obviously the Blue Jays are a team they're looking to take that next step, not only in the AL East, but to win it all. And there's going to be another team I mentioned here, too, uh, that could, that is looking to take the next step. Blue Jays, they're looking to, to take the next step. Dalton Varsho, get him in the offseason. Trying to think of uh, what what pitcher they added. Chris Bassett, I think, was one of the, the starters they added this offseason. Um, look, man, the Blue Jays are the team that's looking to take, take the next step. Um, Alec Manoa will be on the bump um, to start on Thursday, I believe, against Miles Michaelis. Cardinals, Cardinals are a good team to me. They're they're the best team in the NL Central. Um, but the Cardinals are still a good team. Definitely a good team. I think Blue Jays, Cardinals, and again, like I mentioned with Jordan Walker earlier, will be interesting to see what he does. Arenado, Goldschmidt, um, coming off, uh, and Lars Newtbar. Coming off World Baseball Classic, um, Lars Newbar had an awesome World Baseball Classic. It was really fun to watch. He is a really fun personality. As a, obviously, as the name, best ba- probably the best name in baseball. Let's be real, Lars Newbar. Um, so Blue Jays and Cardinals, um, great matchup on both sides. Uh, Blue Jays have one of the better rosters in baseball. Cardinals, um, you know, best team in that division. That's going to be a really fun uh, matchup to watch. Blue Jays and the St. Louis Cardinals. Second matchup. Houston Astros and, and the Chicago White Sox. Chicago White Sox, really disappointing last year. They were a team that were looking. They they were a team to me that they looked like they were supposed to be in the Blue Jays position or maybe the Seattle Mariners position. Maybe they were supposed to be one of those teams. They weren't. They were not. They took a step back. I think they only won. They hovered around 500, right? Didn't they hover around 500? So, but the White Sox... Are going to be. They still have a good roster, though, man. Still have a really good roster. Sees Lynn Giolito is a very important piece for the White Sox this year. 
He was looking like he was going to be one of the more elite pitchers in baseball just about two, three years ago. And he, I don't, I forget if he was injured last year or if he uh, was just bad. It could have been a combination of both. I don't exactly remember, but Giolito uh, will be starting at some point, um, you know, uh, this year or not this year, excuse me. Um, he will be starting. Uh, it looks like he'll be slated to start for the White Sox this weekend. Um, and then obviously on the, on the bump opening day, Dylan sees, um, you know, one of the better pitchers in baseball last year, Dylan sees looking like he's the best, he's the best starter for Chicago uh, getting into this year. So white Sox on the one side, um, the Astros on the other side, the Astros are interesting because no McCullers on opening day or not even opening day, just to, it, it, he would have been slated to start this weekend. I believe McCullers or a Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve is going to miss two to possibly two and a half, three months. It's big for the Astros. Um, they still have a good lineup. Still, I think one of the better teams in baseball, no matter what. So on the one side, the White Sox looking for them to have a good start and possibly bounce back this year, look to make the playoffs. Man, I mean, who knows, man? Who knows? The White Sox were looking like they were going to be a contending team just a year or two ago. And We'll see. And the Astros on the other side, just uh, with the no McCullers, no Altuve, how are they going to um, fare uh, to start the season without those two guys? Astros and White Sox, really interesting to watch. Cleveland and Seattle. Look, man, Seattle is right there with me with the Blue Jays. They are a team that's supposed to take that next step. They are a team that and, – and this is a rematch of the uh, – is it? No, no, I'm sorry. This is not the rematch. I'm thinking Astros-Mariners. but. Um, Seattle is looked at as a team that's supposed to take, and I know you got the Astros in the division there. The Astros are still my, my pick to win, uh, this division, but Seattle's, I don't care. Seattle, even if they get the wild card, they should be a team that's looked at as to at least get to the, the championship series, man. If you're a Mariners fan, if you are Seattle in general, they, they should be a team that you're looking at as to take a next step take that next step uh uh if you are if you're the seattle mariners you got to be looking to take the next step you have uh everything from pitching the lineup the bullpen like they got they got it too man they got it too like the mariners are right there and then cleveland on the other side i think the cleveland sold underrated team i think just because just because cleveland doesn't play like sexy baseball doesn't mean because they play a lot, you know, that you got a lot of hitters like Steven Quad and Andres Jimenez. And, but they did add Josh Bell this year. They did add Josh Bell and they won 92 games last year. And yes, they are a pitching factory. Bieber, Tristan McKenzie, Cal Contral. Okay. Like they, and then in the bullpen back there, you got Karen Chuck and um, Emmanuel Classe. Cleveland, just, just, they're just being slept on a little bit, too. I, I think people, some people like them to win the AL Central, but, like, I don't know, man. They know how to win games. They know how to win games. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if they decided to take the next step. I expect Seattle and Toronto to, to be those teams to try to take the next step. Now, it's a, it's a really, really competitive American league, man. It's a really competitive American league, but Cleveland just always finds ways to win. They just always do. People didn't expect Cleveland to come out and win 92 games last year, and they did. They did. So Cleveland, Seattle, you know, from the pitching-wise matchup there, it's going to be really fun. They got Luis Castillo, Robbie Ray. I keep forgetting. I know they added somebody. Hold up. I'm going to go find this. We're going to – you're going to all wait patiently while I go to roster resource and where I find the Mariners' rotation. Why am I blank? I know they have a loaded rotation. I know they do. Oh, oh, Logan Gilbert's there. Is someone hurt? I swore they had. What? Man, I swore they had somebody. So, Gil, Logan Gilbert. Oh, oh my God. Kirby. Sorry, George Kirby. George Coach. George Kirby. So, you, you, got, you got three guys there uh, with Castillo, Robbie Ray, Kirby. Logan Gilbert's good, too. Logan Gilbert's good. I like Logan Gilbert. Maybe looking for him to take another step here. Uh, He's projected to have 220 strikeouts this year. Um, So Mariners guardians, man, that's my last matchup to watch there. Um, So that's going to do it for the first half of this podcast. 